Come on, turn it over, coach. You're there. Nice. Come on. Why tennis? Well, um, it's better than a treadmill. Um, you can hit the ball really hard. No! Just allowed me to get over there and sweat and yell and no! curse and try to hammer a, a tennis ball so that maybe for about a half an hour I can kind of get that off my chest. No! No! <laughs> I just see, you know, the back of his car, he's got three rackets now and all this gear. And I was like, are you a tennis coach or a football coach? <laughs> ah! Trying to find different outlets can make you a better coach, a better communicator, clears your head a little bit, gives you better perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And being aware of your thoughts and being aware of your mental health is important. For most of Ryan Day's life, he distanced himself from the pain of his past. I don't want to call him angry, but he had a chip on his shoulder for a long time. Ryan's ambition and intensity came from wanting to always be mentally tough and not show a lot of weakness. Ryan and his wife, Christina, grew up in Manchester, New Hampshire. They were childhood teammates on the baseball field, coached by Ryan's father, Raymond. He liked baseball, and I remember him, you know, pitching to us when we were little. I remember running on the beach with him. You know, he worked at a convenience store. He was on his way to work. The next day, you know, he was gone. On January 20th, 1988, according to Day, his father died by suicide. He was 31 years old. We didn't talk about it at all really growing up. How does an eight-year-old process that situation? You know, somebody made a comment to me, like making fun of me that I didn't have a father, and that ended up in a fist fight. That was, it, you know, and um, I kind of had that edge. You know, I, I would see, you know, somebody run up to their dad and hug him after a game, and it was like, that was where I think the chip came from. It's like, okay, you get a dad, but I'm, a, I'm gonna beat you on the field. Day says sports became his outlet. He was a standout athlete in high school, and a record-setting quarterback at the University of New Hampshire. With a future in coaching, he didn't look back. People would ask about his family, and he, I, I remember him telling me, you know, don't say anything about my dad. You have, you know, sadness, you have anger, you have guilt, you have, uh, you know, resentment. And then as you get older, you start to recognize that maybe, you know, he was sick. In 2018, as an assistant at Ohio State, a recruiting trip to a high school in rural Ohio forced Day to confront his past. That was with one of the high school coaches and I walked through the hallway and nobody was in school. And I asked the coach, I said, what's going on? He said, you know, we had another suicide. It was the seventh of the year and it was in May. And I remember calling back home to, to Nina being like, something is wrong. Why is this happening? I just remember him saying to me over the phone, you know, this has to stop. Like, we have to get ahead of this thing. This is a crisis. When you hear things like that, you know, you just, you think, what can we do to try to help? So that moment was a turning point um, in our lives because, I mean, that was the point where he's like, I'm done not talking about this. Now it's time to talk about it. On June 5th, 2019, now the Buckeyes head coach, Ryan spoke publicly for the first time about his father's suicide. Growing up, I didn't quite understand what, what, what all went down. And then as I get older, I start to realize that, that it was a sickness and that these, you know, there's people out there that need help and that there's a stigma attached to it that I don't think is right. And it's a stigma that maybe even as a young person I uh, bought into. That same day, Ryan and his wife started the Christina and Ryan Day Fund for Pediatric and Adolescent Mental Wellness, an effort to provide resources for kids and help destigmatize issues around mental health. One, two, three, go! Yeah! Pretty good. Doesn't it feel good sometimes to just let it out and yell? Yeah. You need to have someone that you can go to. 
whether it's your, your family, your friends, and it's okay to talk about your feelings when something's bothering you. There you go, good job, good job. Immediately, Day's focus showed up in the football program. Right out of the break. Good ball, that's it, that's it. That summer, the Ohio State Athletic Department replaced three part-time staff positions with four full-time mental health professionals. You know, I knew it was important the day that he stopped practice uh, during training camp to introduce us. You have a coach who's bringing awareness to it to break that stigma, but then he's also putting things into action. There's still a few guys in the team that I think are a little ashamed to go ask for help and uh, certainly don't force on anyone, but it's just a regular conversation. Harry Miller, an Ohio State offensive lineman for the past three seasons, says he has dealt with depression and anxiety off and on since childhood. When I was eight, I told mom, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I think about killing myself. And then it sort of became latent as I went into uh, late middle school, throughout high school, early college. In 2021, Miller says his mental health was deteriorating quickly. I would have pervasive suicidal thoughts, and I just thought, well, this must be how everybody thinks. It was trivial to me. It was, it was straightforward. If I had a gun, I probably wouldn't be here. I had a box cutter that I'd used for uh, engineering projects, and so I just started using my box cutter to draw blood, and um, I still have lines on my um, arms and uh, sometimes when when I get flushed and my neck turns red um, I can see a line across my throat and uh, sometimes I can feel the line and so um, I've been very uh, very grateful that I did not cut myself deep enough to where um, I was <laughs> Uh, impossible to recover. Shortly before the 2021 season opener, Harry confided in Coach Day. I told him everything. And of course, I'm nervous because we're, we're preparing for the season right now. I told him that uh, I've been feeling this way for some time now. The only difference is now that you know about it. He just shared with me some of the stuff that was going on with him and uh, just fortunate enough that he felt comfortable enough to do that. And then immediately, you know, we just kicked right in and, and made sure that, uh, you know, he got with the professionals that he needed. And thank God we had in place a system and a, and a program to help him. He started seeing one of the psychiatrists on the Ohio State staff. He continued to practice, but ultimately decided not to play the 2021 season. On March 21st, Miller announced on social media he was medically retiring from football. Perhaps the life was kicked out of me a bit in those few months, and it sort of maybe stole some strength from me and gave it to me in other places. And I was very content to, um, to help where I could, and I didn't think that was on the field. I thought that was elsewhere. The greatest feeling that I've experienced was to have other people reach out to me and say, because of this or because of you, um, I would like to share this. Harry Miller's journey continues, but he says the help he received might never have happened if his coach hadn't faced his own experience with life lost. He had had an experience himself and that equipped him with the ability to respond quickly and to not be um, shy about it, to not be confused about it, to not be dismissive about it. Move the free safety with your eyes! I do think as a leader, when you show vulnerability, then you connect with everyone and you show them that it is okay for that. If I'm sharing my story and willing to you know, share some personal thoughts, then they're maybe they're more willing to do so. Sometimes that is the matter of life and death. The structure of having a coach like Coach Day who is receptive, having a staff um, like the mental health staff, and the things that were in place at Ohio State definitely saved my life.